Thank you for joining me here back on the show for the last segment to just give you guys a last minute injury update in case you need to make any fantasy changes or anything like that or just if you are unaware of it for any of your favorite teams heat leading into this week of football. I think the biggest piece of news, there was a couple from this morning and also just recently that I saw uh, Christian McCaffrey will not be playing against the Minnesota Vikings this week. Uh, the 49ers decided to hold him off again after going through practice at a limited capacity. They decided not to play him, which I think is the right decision, honestly. Um, there's no reason to rush him back right now, especially how Jordan Mason looked. Like I mentioned, at some point this week, um, it makes no sense to just feel the need to like want to bring Christian McCaffrey back, right? They're going to hold off on it, but the interesting part about that is is that the reports that I did see... Um, saying that Christian McCaffrey was not going to play. Also mentioned how Kyle Shanahan and the 49ers are now open to the fact that they could use uh, Christian McCaffrey and could use him and put him potentially on the injured reserve going forward, which would be pretty, um, pretty surprising just because, you know, they've kind of played it up to be like, they're just going to take it day by day, week by week, and it shouldn't be too bad. But now, like I kind of alluded to the fact before with the tendonitis to the Achilles and kind of a very delicate situation with that Christian um, being such a workhorse just off of the back of last year and dealing with that as a runner of the football. Obviously, a lot of stress on your legs and the joints and ligaments and everything. Um, to kind of have Achilles tendonitis and potentially lingering all year with the possibility of making your Achilles more vulnerable to a tear, it makes no sense to bring him back now. Now to put him on IR, it makes you think that this could be a little bit worse than initially thought of, so that's concerning. But um, if they do put him on IR, it's going to stink for a lot of fantasy owners already, but um, I wouldn't be mad at it just because, again, the 49ers look so dominant from an actual football perspective with Jordan Mason just overall how dominant they are. Um, if they get him back by like week eight or something and he's a lot better, um, that's going to be the best for their football team. They're certainly going to get by without him. So um, that's the biggest piece of news more recently than this morning. I kind of talked about it a little bit before. It was that this morning the Chiefs placed Hollywood Brown on the IR relating to the Christian McCaffrey news a little bit there. It will mean that Marquise Brown will miss at least the next four weeks um, because of the injured reserve rule, rule, right? If you're officially placed on there, you have to miss four weeks of the NFL season. Now Marquise Brown will undergo surgery to repair that dislocated SC joint in his shoulder. NFL insider Jordan Schultz mentioned while he was reporting on it that uh, even though Marquise Brown felt better about that shoulder, his shoulder was still not healing the right way, according to the reports. So without surgery, there was still a risk of a more serious injury happening to the wide receiver for the Chiefs. So it was decided that a surgery would be the best option for them going forward. And also that it is a blow for them, obviously, that he's not going to be there. You're going to have to wait even longer to see him in regular season of football with all the anticipation around them. But to me, uh, it makes the, the addition, the drafting of Xavier Worthy that much better to soften the blow a little bit, to kind of develop him more, have him have a bigger role in this offense. And then once Marquise Brown comes back with Rasheed Rice, they're going to be a well-oiled machine, even more than they are right now, it seems like. So it's definitely unfortunate. I was looking forward to seeing Marquise Brown, but if this is the best thing for him to be the healthiest, I think no one could really be too upset because similarly to the 49ers, the Chiefs are not you know, going to drop their necks like six games. They're going to do just fine without him. So um, that is that. Then the next piece of news, T. Higgins didn't practice again today because of that hamstring injury that kept him out of week one. It's very likely now that he's going to miss this next game against the Kansas City Chiefs. And it's interesting too because they asked T. Higgins about this injury and the idea that has been brought up to him was that some fans actually have this thought, this sort of conspiracy that T. Higgins is, you know, sort of faking this injury, still connected to 
the fact that he didn't get a contract extension now. He's just milking the season, milking this injury away to kind of get by, to just leave them ultimately, it looks like. But um, he's denied that, obviously, with the fact that um, the deadline has passed to give an extension to a franchise tag player. So um, if you knew that fact, it makes sense that He's not faking it because he can't get an extension anyway. So there's no real reason to do that. Um, so the Cincinnati Bengals will have to roll out with Jamar Chase, Andre Yoshivas, and Irwin as their top targets in that game. It doesn't make me any more confident in this offense. Um, if T. Higgins was even playing, that they could potentially beat the Chiefs at home. Um, I expect them, I will say this, I will expect them to look a little bit cleaner a little bit more explosive because I don't think Jamar Chase caught a pass over 10 to 15 yards until the fourth quarter or something crazy like that. So um, I'll expect the Bengals to look a bit more threatening, a bit more tidy, clean um, with some of their plays, progressions, and things like that. But it doesn't make me confident that they're going to go toe-to-toe with this Chiefs offense now. Um, I still see them at a deficit, and this is just another blow to their chances, in my opinion. Then, moving on to the Chicago Bears. Keenan Allen and Roma Dunes, a mispractice yesterday, as well as today. And it's looking like Roma Dunes is the one that's probably not going to play, if I'm going to guess. Head coach Matt Eberflus said that the real concern out of all these injuries, mainly Keenan and Rome, is that Rome is uh, the real concern for him and the coaching staff. They're not really too concerned about Keenan Allen as much. So we could see Keenan Allen out there. You know, he's a veteran. He doesn't necessarily need the practices, if you will. He is joining a new team, so that's that. But um, I feel like he's still, you know, going to contribute a lot if he plays. It's certainly going to be better for them if he's out there rather than not. So that's a bit more encouraging. Keenan Allen Miss practice with a sore heel, sort of a precautionary thing, according to reports. So, again, more optimism around him to play. Roma Dunze had a more severe MCL sprain than obviously a heel soreness situation with Keenan Allen. So, um, it is a little bit concerning with MCLs and ligaments and things like that. So, I wouldn't expect Rome to play in this game. Keenan Allen, different story. If he feels a little bit better on Sunday, Saturday, I wouldn't be surprised to see him out there as well. Um, Because the the Chicago Bears will definitely need him, right? They need to see Caleb play better, especially after last week's game. But going up against the Texans, no Rome. Hopefully Keenan Allen's out there. Um, It's going to be a little bit tricky for them to win that game. Then just recently, off of last night, I mentioned Terrell Bernard. Uh, He avoided major injury, apparently, last night as he was diagnosed with only a pectoral strain rather than a full pectoral tear. Um, Because a full tear requires surgery, he was going to be out most of the year. Like it happened to Matt Milano, actually. I'm sure he tore his pec, if I remember correctly. So he's going to be out until at least December. And they dodged the bullet here with Terrell, um, Terrell Bernard, because he stepped up as almost the leader of this team, and now um, he's still going to miss about a month, but to still have him for the major part of the season is still huge. The Bills definitely needed a break like this. You know, they already lost Milano. With all the new changes going on, uh, to have Terrell Bernard go down would have been devastating for them, so that's that. The Bills kind of got away unscathed. One that was curious also was that Miles Garrett didn't practice yesterday. He appeared on the injury report with a foot injury. It was really just soreness, dealing with with some, uh, some foot soreness, according to some sources close to the Cleveland Browns. He's expected to play against the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're going to need him to play um, to really shut down the door in Jacksonville. And speaking of Jacksonville, here the last injury to kind of keep you guys up to date is that unfortunately for them, they already placed their top defensive back, Tyus Campbell, on the injured reserve. So he's going to be out for about a month. But now 
head coach Doug Peterson announced that Darnell Savage, one of their safeties, is probably going to miss the Cleveland game, according to Peterson. He hurt his quad this week in practice. He didn't participate yesterday, and Doug Peterson mentioned that he's not anticipating Darnell Savage to be out there, which is um, another big blow to the Jaguars because, again, I love their defensive line, but against the Browns offensive line that should be a little bit healthier if their tackles come back. Um, it's not going to help that the wide receivers, Amari Cooper, Jerry Judy, are just getting open because you don't have Tyus Campbell. You don't have now Darnell Savage. It could be looking a little bit light back there and benefiting the Cleveland Browns. Obviously, Deshaun needs to win this game, so that's going to work more in their favor, certainly giving them more of an advantage, but... Um, It kind of also makes you think that the Browns, if they needed any more reason to win this game, now with these injuries, they should um, perform better, look better than they did against the Dallas Cowboys. But that's all I have on the injury front. That's all the latest updates that I wanted to bring you on some of these injuries. And that's also going to conclude our show for today. That's going to do it for today's episode of the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast. Please remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the show, as well as following the network on all forms of social media. To catch more of this show, check out both the YouTube channels, the Podcast Network channel, and the GSMC Sports Network channel as well. For a lot more content around the NFL in a variety of different ways regarding this show and lastly tune in every weekday at 6 30 p.m eastern time to catch more of this show talking about all the latest headlines around the nfl with me manny mara diege as your host thanking you for joining me hope you guys enjoy the games this week we're going to talk about all of them next week when we return back here on monday Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go to.